Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Light of the Valley. It is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, and just one more Sunday yet, but we're going to be in that non-festival season of church here. We don't have those major big events like Christmas and Easter. Um, before uh, November, we start getting a few more as we kind of look at the idea of end times. So for this morning, yeah, we're looking at another time yet at the life of a believer and really looking at the idea of Jesus being our merciful high priest. That's going to be our focus through the hymns and through the Bible readings this morning. We start on page three in the worship folder with our first hymn, This Is My Father's World. God bless your worship here today. God, 
now and forever. Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. Bring up this small little portion from Genesis chapter 14 because it's going to relate to our second lesson and the overall idea of Jesus being our merciful and great high priest. There's this somewhat insignificant, you would think, or maybe random character who appears in the life of Abraham, and his name is Melchizedek. But what we need to know is from here. He's a priest of the God Most High. He worships with Abraham. And that will help us as we go into our second lesson from Hebrews. But let's hear now from Genesis chapter 14. After Abram returned from defeating Chedorlaomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Sheba, that is, the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. This is the word of our Lord. Today's second Bible reading comes from Hebrews chapter 5, reading verses 1 through 10. Jesus is greater than any priest, than any human priest could ever be. He is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We hear, every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray. Since he himself is subject to weakness, this is why he has offered sacrifices for our own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions, with fervent cries and tears to, them, to the one who would, could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and sing the Alleluia's. <laughs>
guys for coming up here this morning. So, you guys are all tech savvy and young, so what do I have today? A phone. It's my phone, right? My smartphone. So, uh, I'm guessing probably your parents or, you know, your grandparents, the people you have taking care of you, they probably all have these phones. Do you guys have one of these phones yet? Nope. No? Yeah, no, you don't. Um, but, how often do you think I should get a new phone? Not very often? Like, when should I get a new one? Like, when it starts to fall apart. Like, when it starts to fall apart? That's pretty good. <laughs> when, it's not when it's not working anymore? Or when it freezes and then it comes back to unfreeze. Okay, yeah, so if any of you got a problem with it, do you know there's some people who sign up just to get new phones every single year? Because technology is always changing. You always want to get something that's better, something that works a little faster, something that holds a little bit more information. Yeah, we're going to talk about these in just a minute. Actually. Don't worry, there's a connection. See, these things change all the time. This thing is going to wear out. This thing is going to, I've had this thing, I'm actually pretty happy. I've had it for over four years. It still works, still works pretty good. But, one day this isn't going to work anymore. And I'm going to have to get a new phone. I know that. But you know what? Jesus isn't like a phone. He's not going to wear out on you. He's not going to freeze up and not work anymore. He's not going to break. No, Jesus never needs an upgrade. You never need to replace Jesus. So Jesus, what we're going to talk about today in the sermon, in the message, is how Jesus is the best thing we can possibly have. He calls him a, a priest, somebody who represents us before God and then represents God to us. Because not only does he represent God, he is God. And because he's God, he actually was able to be perfect for us. So he came down, was tempted like we are to do bad things, but he didn't sin. And then he died on the cross to take away our sins. And we know that he still lives because God raised him up from the dead. And so he still lives for us every day. He prays for us. He's with us always, he says, to the very end of the, day, of the age. And he always takes care of us. So if you ever feel alone, you know that you have Jesus with you. If you ever feel like God's not there, you know Jesus is. It's never, Jesus never gets broken, never needs an upgrade. But he's going to be with you always. And we're going to talk about it as our perfect high priest. So let's pray about that. Let's thank, thank Jesus for being with us always. Dear Lord, we thank you that you did everything to take away the wrong things we've done, to take away our sins. We know that you are there for us forever, every day, every second, and we'll never need to replace you. You're going to be good always because you are perfect. So thank you, Lord, for being with us and being our great high priest. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys head back to your folks. Thank you for coming out this morning. All right, we're going to continue with our next hymn, and that is hymn 359, Jesus, my great high priest. Hymn 359.
Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on today was the second Bible re reading we heard from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. As we meditation on that word, let us pray. Dear Lord, you live to always intercede for us. You know all of our weaknesses. You know the temptations we face. So Lord, be our strength. Be our intercessor. Be our mediator. Be the one who makes us perfect. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, So the Word of God works. I'm fully confident of that. I know it happens. You can see it in people. And I'm very glad that often it works in spite of me. Because one thing I've learned is that God set up His ministry with a human element to it. And the human element can be a really good thing. It's something that He wanted His people to have. Something that this author to the letter of the Hebrew Christians says right up front Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. It's something that God called people to do, to represent him, offer sacrifices. And it's not something we just pick up on our own. We don't call ourselves to it. It says, and no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God just as Aaron was. Aaron was very explicitly, he, Aaron is the brother of Moses, he was very explicitly told by God, you will serve as the high priest over the people, and then said all of your descendants would be the priest after you. They all had this calling from God. Even as a pastor, I'm called from the people here, through God, God calls through the people, so that I'm here. I didn't just decide, hey, I want to be a pastor one day, and say, yep, I'm going to be in Lincoln, Utah, and that's where I'm going to serve. It actually is a call from God to be here. But the human element, why did God bring it to be a part of giving his word to people? He says, because the human, the high priest, is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. What does that mean? When you think about it, there is a nice part of having people from among you serve you in worship, being the one standing up in front of you, bringing you the word of God, because you know that that person is standing in front of you right now is like you. That as you go through temptations, as you know the things that you have a hard time saying no to, you can probably figure if you sit down with the pastor, if you sit down with the priest, you can ask them if they wrestle with the same things. And you're going to find out if they don't wrestle with the very same thing, they're going to wrestle with something similar. They're like you. You sit down with a pastor or priest because you're, you're finding yourself straying, going away. Your pastor has at one point too. Because he is weak. He knows what it is to be tempted, and he knows what it is to fall. So kind of the sad thing is, is yep, that makes your pastor and priest relatable. You can talk to him, you know he's going to have experienced the same things, but at the same time you know he's going to fail at them. And he's probably failed you. In some way, shape, or form, you can start going down the list and think about how has your pastor failed you, and it's simple. Maybe your pastor doesn't know you as well as you would want him to know you. He doesn't know everything going on in your life unless you tell him, and even then, you probably don't have enough time to tell him, nor does he have the time to actually sit and learn every aspect of your life, all the things you're going through. He's inadequate. And even though he can relate, he knows what it's like to be tempted. He may not be tempted the way you are tempted. He may be able to step back and say, yeah, that's hard, but I've never been there. I haven't experienced that. Your pastor 
has a limited amount of time. So as much as I know that I'm on call, as much as he wants to be there for you, maybe he's just not. Maybe something came up. Maybe he's out of town, but he's not there for you. And then because I know my weakness, means that I've sinned and I've probably sinned against you. Every priest, every pastor is relatable, but at the same time, they're all failures. That's why he, as the author says, that's why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. Because quite frankly, you need someone better. You need someone superior. And the question is, where are you going to find that? Well, it's found only in Jesus. Jesus, much like the high priest back in the days of the Old Testament, back in the Israelite worship life, priests like Aaron, they were called by God. So too, Jesus was called by God the Father to be a priest. But it was a very different relationship. It wasn't like, hey Aaron, you're going to serve as the high priest forever because your descendants will serve after you. But it was coming to Jesus and saying, you're my son. Today I've become your father. This is a relationship that no one else has with God because Jesus is son to the father, but at the same time it's not as if the father birthed out the son. It's the fact that this is their relationship. He is the son of God while at the same time being God. This makes him very different from any other priest, any other pastor that has ever served, because none of them are God. And the author says, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So we're going deep on this one today. This is, this is something that is not brought up a whole lot in the Bible. There are just two References in the entire Old Testament, all 39 books of the Old Testament, where the name Melchizedek comes up. One is the one that we heard, quoted from Psalm 110, a psalm written by King David about 1000 BC, where he says, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And then there was the Bible passage we heard in our first lesson today from Genesis chapter 14. Happening during the life of Abraham, around about 2000 BC, before God has even set up this whole Levitical priesthood, this whole way of worship. People knew God, people worshipped God, but not in the way that priests were set up yet. So this Melchizedek, he's interesting because there's so little we know about him. He just kind of appears on the scene. He's right there with Abraham. Abraham just won this great battle against these kings, Ketelamor and those who were allied with him. And then comes Melchizedek, priest of Salem, or king of Salem, priest of God Most High. Just out of nowhere. We don't know where he's from. We don't know where he was born. We don't know when he dies. He's never brought up again in the entire account of Abraham. He's just there. And he worships with Abraham. Blesses Abraham. Says that God has given you the victory. God has taken care of you. May God, uh, God Most High continue to bless you. They worshiped together. Abraham even gave him an offering, a tithe. We never hear about Melchizedek again until David brings him up. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So then the author of the Hebrews picks up that same idea, and because he is writing inspired by God, he connects it all for us. There's this priest, there's this earthly representative, this human, who was priest of God Most High, but he wasn't a priest like all the other priests you have come to know. All the other Levites that have come and gone, because they are weak. You know their weakness, you know they have sinned, you know they sinned because they died. The wages of sin is death. So here comes a different priest. A priest, we don't know his beginning, we don't know his end, like God. 
God has just always been. He doesn't have a beginning. He wasn't born one day and then lived to another point and then died. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. No beginning, no end. So Jesus comes not as a priest from the line of Aaron, the line of Levi, but as a priest in the order of this Melchizedek person. A priest that lives forever. This is different. This is new. To have a priest that doesn't eventually die on you, doesn't eventually leave on you, but in fact lives forever, this is something completely different. This is actually exactly what we need. We need someone who lives forever. We need someone who never runs out of time, who never leaves tasks unaccomplished, and that's what Jesus did. See, the Levites, they died. Aaron died. Your pastors die because we're sinful people. But Jesus, he lives forever. And he serves as our high priest. Because what he does is he represents us before God. He did this through prayer. We're told by the author to these Hebrew Christians that during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Jesus came down from heaven, took on human flesh and blood just like we do. He prayed to God. He prayed to his Father. And yet, you have to keep that kind of weird, different aspect of he is God, but he's also praying to God. <clears throat> and when we think about Jesus praying for us during his earthly ministry, you know there's lots of examples of it, but probably the first and foremost we can think of is Jesus that night before he goes to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because he did pray with cries, where he pleaded with God, if there's another way, take this cup of suffering from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. That he submitted himself to the suffering that was about to take place. That he would willingly go through this because he knew he had to be something better, something superior, something that we needed. He needed to be a perfect sacrifice and offer himself once for all, to pay for the sins of the whole world, to pay for your sins and my sins, to pay for them completely and totally. So he prayed, and he submitted. He underwent the suffering. He underwent the trials. He was tempted in every way that we are. But here's the difference. He did not sin. He experienced all the temptations that you and I experience. That if you've ever felt lonely, if you've ever felt inadequate, if you ever felt that you just couldn't go on any, any longer, if you ever looked at something and it just thought, I can't, I can't overcome, he knows what that feels like. He knows what that is because he was tempted in every way that we are, except for that one important, crucial difference. He never gave in. He never sinned. He remained perfect. And then when he went to that cross and he gave up his life, then it was his perfect blood that he shed to cover over every single one of our sins. By that, we have been forgiven. We have been made perfect. We are clothed with his righteousness. And that cannot be taken away because God raised him from the dead. He did not stay in death, but came back to life. He lives forever. And he lives as our priest to pray for us on our behalf, meaning that when he stands there, we offer our prayers. Jesus takes them and reminds the Father, if you want to put it in that way, says, Listen to them because they're perfect. They're clothed with what I've done. They're clothed with my precious blood. 
They are forgiven. They are perfect because of what I did. And so hear them, Lord. Answer them. Take care of them. Because they're clothed in my perfection. And Jesus, because he's God, not just a man, he also is able to intercede for every person, every single time we ever need him, that he doesn't ever leave our side. He never gets overwhelmed. He never forgets. He knows everything about your life, knows you even better than you know yourself. And he's the one praying on your behalf. He's the one going to God for you. To me, isn't that so much better than just having somebody who relates to you? Because that's the thing. Your priests, your pastors, yeah, they, they're relatable. They understand weakness because they are weak. Because they have fallen. Because they do sin. And they're not enough. But Christ is. Not only did he live that perfection and give up his life, but in that same way, he experienced temptation the same way we do. So he does know exactly what you're going through. It's not just a platitude. It's not just something he says. He lived it. He overcame it. He gave up his life then in place of ours. And then he was raised from the dead by the Father, making sure and certain to us that his payment was accepted, and so now you are clothed with Jesus' perfection. He is so much more than a relatable high priest. He is the perfect high priest. He is exactly the kind of priest that we need, exactly the kind of person to represent us before God. Because every other human failed. Jesus does not. And Jesus will not, and Jesus cannot. Because he is more than just a man. He is also our God. He is a priest forever, as he tells us. Always living to intercede for you. Always living to take care of you. Always living so that you can know without a doubt where you stand with God. That you are forgiven. That he is going to take care of you. That he is going to pray for you. We have the perfect priest, Jesus, our great high priest. May we always go to him and seek him, because he will never fail us. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's confess our Christian faith uh, singing uh, the creed hymn that starts on page 8 and goes on to page 9.
love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord Jesus Christ grants you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. O Lord, my God, I call to you for help, and you answer me. I thank you for the love you have shown me in Jesus Christ, my Savior. Through him, you have rescued me from the guilt of my sin and given me the peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just a note before we continue with our offerings. Uh, thank you for our guests and visitors who have joined us today. It's a pleasure to have you here and share God's Word with you. Uh, if you would like to uh, follow up, have me follow up with you sometime this week, uh, we have little contact cards in every second and fourth chair in that rack by where the, the, the red hymnals are. If you want, you can fill it out with your name and whatever information you'd like me to use to contact you the following this next week. You can hand that in the offering plate as it comes around, or you can give it to me at the end of service today. So with that, let's continue our worship by gathering gifts and offerings to our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we marvel at your great humility for leaving your heavenly throne to walk the way of the cross as our the way of the cross as our substitute and as our great high priest. Through you and you resisting and overcome temptation, we have full forgiveness, perfect righteousness. Through you alone, we are graciously made fit in every way for heaven. We praise you for having given us the victory over sin, death, hell, and the devil. God saved you from death by raising you from the dead, so that now you live to intercede for us always, to be with us always. As our living and exalted prophet, comfort our hearts with the gospel of forgiveness. Cast away from us all doubt and draw us continually closer to you, our great high priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. Use us as your witnesses to proclaim your saving name to others. Forgive our pastors for their sins for their faults, their flaws, their imperfections. Help them to recognize their sin, repent of it, and find forgiveness in you, their perfect high priest. Help us to forgive them and restore them as we ourselves have been forgiven and restored by your reverent submission and perfect obedience. As our great high priest, constantly restore the unity of the spirit here and the bond of peace that you established. Hear us when we pray. 
intercede for us as one who completely understands the temptations we go through, but also as one who has overcome all of them for us. As our exalted King, watch over us day by day, protecting us from all danger, guarding and keeping us from every evil that threatens our bodies and souls. Uplift and sustain us as on eagle's wings until the day when you transport us one by one from the church militant on earth to the church triumphant in heaven. Lord, we pray today on behalf of our brother in Christ, J.D. Payne. This coming Wednesday, he will have a heart catheter to see if there's any blockages in his heart. They want, Lord, to improve his health. We look to you as the great physician, as our merciful high priest, who can accomplish all things. So be with J.D. Comfort him with your care that you are with him always and interceding for him. Give him healing and relief according to your will. Lord, also for all those who have suffered the tragedy and the shooting of this past week, Lord, we ask that you be with them too. Bring healing to the families affected. Bring justice to the evildoers. Continue to watch over and protect us so that we all may enjoy the heavenly home that you have prepared for us. Now, Lord, we ask you to hear us as we bring you our private petition. Great High Priest, hear and answer all our prayers according to your good and gracious will. And hear us now also as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
may be seated. Well, thank you for coming uh, this Sunday morning, joining us for worship and hearing about our superior, our greatest high priest, Jesus Christ, because he does not fail us. Uh, so that's, that's a wonderful comfort we can take with us home today. Uh, announcements to have. First of all, just thank you for everybody who helped with the uh, trunk or treat yesterday. Uh, we had about 250 people come through, so I think that's our highest trunk or treat yet to date. So that was uh, very wonderful. Thank you all for um, coming, helping, and supporting that. Uh, we have a um, couple events coming up. There's a little fellowship opportunity at Neaters tomorrow morning. Um, there are still um, some tickets if you want to go see the Harlem Globetrotters. One special event on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Yes, I know it's Halloween. That's actually very purposeful. It was actually a church holiday first, All Hallows Eve, All Holy Eve for the saints who have gone before. Um, but it was also October 31st in 1517 that a German monk in Wittenberg uh, posted 95 debate topics talking about how forgiveness is a free gift from God, not something that can be bought and sold with money. So, thinking of Martin Luther, um, on the day he more or less, uh, we look at as the start of the Reformation of the Church, uh, we're going to show just a documentary about his life uh, for everybody who'd like to come see that. It was just produced this last year. Um, that'll be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, October 31st, being done basically in conjunction with the catechism class uh, that night. So feel free to come along, and uh, if you want to bring some movie snacks, go ahead and enjoy it. Other than that, we also have coming up a uh, joint Reformation service next Sunday, November 4th, at 4 p.m. Uh, so that's inviting our other uh, sister congregations from the area down in the Salt Lake area, uh, from West Jordan, Taylorsville, and also Lehigh. Um, and there's going to be a meal right after that. If you haven't signed up and think you'll be there, please sign up just so we can know to prepare enough food uh, for that meal. And although she's out of town this weekend, but if you have questions, you contact Brenda Kidd uh, for any more information. Um, also realize next Sunday is Daylight Savings. So it's fall back, so you get to move that clock back an hour. So 2 a.m. becomes 1 a.m. means you get an extra hour of sleep. Or you show up at 5 o'clock. Or you, yeah, or you come. If you just come to 1030 church, you can just come. Same time, you just come into the Bible class. Um, so... I think that's all the announcements we have just coming up, uh, so a lot more things still happening, a lot more happening as we're getting uh, into November, um, but take a minute, say hello to the people you come to worship with, come and get some treats, we've got lots of goodies in the fellowship hall, and then I'll get to the back to shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on you. Real quick, Pastor, there is a voter's meeting ah, today. That is how much I have forgotten about this voter's meeting, because it wasn't in the bulletin last week. I remembered it midweek. Yes, there is a voter's meeting. We just give you updates on what's happening in the congregation. Yeah, so no big, major, momentous things. But come and be informed, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, God.